uh, if you have ever used build packs, the pack CLI, which cut, which is uh, what um, industry has standardized on, they have a spec which converts code to container images. Um, this is what that tool is doing essentially, except it's not using Docker. And I know Solomon uh, said uh, not to bash on Docker today, but uh, not bashing on it, just not using it. Um, so essentially I, I thought about this like in the year beginning when we wanted to have a build system um, and to have a build system, like we use Kubernetes internally. So uh, for the build system to be there, uh, we wanted to use build kit, but it was not obvious how to uh, approach build kit uh, because it's like the APIs is uh, quite complicated and there was only a one uh, front end maintained by someone, uh, one of the build kit maintainers uh, and it didn't really click uh, for us to use it back there. And the pack SDK itself was very tied to the Docker client. Um, so when I saw the Go SDK of Dagger, I was like, okay, this this literally solves my issue of having a simpler API to talk to, uh, to build kit. So, uh, I jumped in. I jumped in on the Discord channel, and uh, Solomon, Solomon and I had a really good chat about how we could be integrating it. Uh, and then someone from the community came in and gave us the secret sauce survey, uh, which I'll show in a bit. So essentially, this program um, is aiming to uh, build an image uh, from the Git URL. Uh, and there are options for the builder images. You can pass in anything, uh, any builder image. And then uh, it generates a SBOM and a vulnerability report. So uh, after the image is built, you, you would have a SBOM and a vulnerability report and you could store it either in this directory like you just saw coming up or in an object store uh, in addition to that. So uh, it, it's really simple. Like um, essentially like, First, we get the, uh, like we build the container and then we clone the repo. And the only step which was missing, which was not obvious, uh, was that you could actually just exec into the base image and run the command from the spec. So uh, I was really thinking about using the pack SDK to do this, uh, but it was uh, very simple to just do it this way, which uh, typically, like basically solved the issue of. Uh, building the image. And in, in this example, I'm essentially having a remote build kit because um, um, because uh, of uh, easily orchestrating the whole build, build problem. Um, and uh, for that reason, like I have, I'm on a pretty old version of Dagger because back then uh, build kit, uh, sorry, Dagger did support uh, the build kit underscore host variable where we could uh, do it for so until it's officially back again. Like uh, I'll, I'll, I'm remaining on this version. Um, other than that, it's like uh, after the image is built, it basically just uh, generates the image, find, scans the uh, SBOM for vulnerabilities, and then tells us uh, how many vulnerabilities have fixes available out of these. Um, that's pretty much it, um, and. Some of the projects I used to, uh, like this is on my GitHub repo, but some of the projects I used basically were uh, Dagger, of course, build packs to build the image and then build it to uh, do that. And then as uh, gripe and shift to for the SBOM and vulnerability a bit. And this is pretty much uh, what I needed out of a build system, which generates a image, container image, pushes it. Uh, so in this case, this actually pushed to a ttl.sh uh, which is an anonymous registry, which where you don't need to have your credentials to push things. So it's really nice for your CI/CD stuff where you just want a temporary image for your open source repositories. Um, so that's pretty much it from me. And uh, Hirsch, there's a few uh, questions in here, and uh, yeah, this is this is really cool. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be here to show it off today. Um, okay, sorry. Let me just scroll through the. Um, there was one uh, from Joel. Uh, it, it wasn't able to catch uh, what feature regression had you on the older version. So maybe you could just clarify that, and we can we'll make sure on our end we have some issues around that. Yeah. So essentially, uh, I had uh, there's this variable uh, which lets you connect your Dagger C uh, uh, your um, Dagger session to a remote build kit instance. 
So for that reason, uh, like it was supported until 0.3.x, like some version, I think it was essentially not uh, accepted from 0.4, uh, but uh, I know that Dagger team is working on bringing it back along with, uh, essentially the model will be that we, instead of a build kit cluster, we would have a Dagger cluster to maintain and uh, uh, that dagger cluster is something that can do the remote builds where the execution would happen. Whereas the local process would just sit there, just requesting the build. Um, this is really nice, nice because uh, in a in a Q Kubernetes environment where we could essentially have a, a CRD, and that CRD would uh, let's say we have a, a build CRD, and it just says the repo name, um, and they could the operator could spin up a job. And this this process is what, what would run on that job. Um, and there would be some way of uh, showing this logs to the user back. And essentially this job could be a short-lived job where it just requests the uh, build to the build kit, in, uh, build kit or dagger uh, cluster. So uh, that delegation where you have a shared one place to manage your builds is really nice because in the previous case where um, we were thinking about uh, using the pack SDK, it was really tough because what we had to do was that job used to run inside the same container image, which meant that if something went wrong with that build, there's no way to diagnose what went wrong. It's not easy. Like we would have to uh, execute to the dead container and then uh, it's not really easy uh, to dig, dig through the logs and then find out what happened. Whereas here we know that build kit is responsible for the builds. Um, Oh, thanks. Thank, no, thank you for the clarification. That's, that's great. Um, and then we have two uh, questions, um, additional questions. Um, just saying, and sorry, I'm trying to connect the dots. So it's not so out of context for you. Um, he was asking for more explanation on how it works for if you ended up modifying the PAC CLI or did you bypass it altogether? didn't use the pack CLI at all because uh, it, it was the pack SDK itself was very tight to the uh, Docker client. Like uh, essentially they didn't have any way for us to connect outside of uh, Docker. Like that was the only client. So it was uh, very easy. Like someone, some I, I remember someone from community pointed out, I forgot their name, but it was really nice that they pointed out that this, this was just all we needed to do when uh, like, uh, we are considering all sorts of crazy things when adding Dacker client to pack SDK, but it's really all, all we needed to do was just execute this command. Uh, sorry, let me remove this. Yeah, this command where you just run uh, creator and then image name, which uh, just builds the code. And then uh, last, the last question, there's another one in the chat, but I'll, I'll do one more live question. We'll move to the last demo. Um, is, uh, can you explain the need for a remote runner feature? Yeah, so essentially having a remote runner would help us cache uh, these layers. Like if, if someone is frequently using the uh, image I use, let's say uh, by default, I have, um, Yeah, so let's say someone is frequently using this image, uh, then it, it just means that build kit will cache that image. And also if they want to reference the image they just built, a build kit would have that cache as well. So uh, it's really useful for uh, teams when they are developing, when they don't have to wait around for uh, images to get built. And also it's really convenient because uh, for someone who's on a Mac M1, where sometimes images didn't don't get built uh, because of the architecture differences, it, it's simple because you then have a remote builder where you can, uh, you know, make your life easy. Yeah. 